Shabazz and Gafai back together. Hello, Emmett Ryan from Ball on Europe here, and it is great to be back with you again today. This is our Friday video. We do a Monday, Wednesday, Friday video, and this is all about Shabazz Napier, Niels Gafai, former UConn teammates, now Bayern Munich teammates, and why UConn fans, for more than that, ought to be FC Bayern fans. Like, we're neutral as a site when it comes to EuroLeague, but when I saw this move, I said, hang on a second, there's a bit more here than that. So all of this video is about why y'all, uh, you UConn fans, should be, not just because they're great U UConn greats, both Shabazz and Niels Gafai, obviously, but uh, for many other reasons, commonalities you will find that your EuroLeague team should be FC Bayern. Before we get to the main thrust of the video, please subscribe, uh, every sub, every share, every comment, they all help. And now let's get to it. So we're going to deal with the core bit first, which is, of course, it is great to see Shabazz Napier and Niels Gafai back together on a basketball court as teammates. For those of you who aren't UConn fans tuning in, who are kind of wondering why I'm bringing this up, the two of them, of course, won two NCAA championships together while playing for UConn 2011 and 2014, before they went off on their very different paths as basketball players, as pros. Uh, Shabazz bounced around the NBA for a bit before making his eventual visit to Europe. First at Zenit St. Petersburg, then with Milano, and now his first time with a German team, of course, FC Bayern. Niels Gafai, he's stayed in Europe pretty much, uh, was great for Alba, had a Zalgir stint, and of course now he is at FC Bayern as well for the last couple of seasons. And Niels Gafai, of course, a World Club, Cup, World Club, a World Cup champion in 2023 with FC Bayern. And that is actually relevant because of who the coach for FC Bayern is this year, which I'm guessing a lot of the UConn fans tuning in won't be aware of. Gordy Herbert, uh, he's uh, like you know been the Germany national coach for quite a while, did a great job with them, got them, of course, bronze in Eurobasket, won that World Cup last year, and then fourth place at the Olympics. He's brought German basketball to levels. It really hasn't seen on a consistent basis ever. And in terms of just medal-winning basis, uh, like, what, I suppose, 2003, was it? Uh, no, so 2002. Um, I suppose you could argue the uh, Eurobasket they won in the early 90s under Pezic as well, but they haven't had this level of sustained success ever with the men. So Gordy Herbert, he's coming in as coach, and that is great, great news, by the way, for anyone who is looking at Napier and Gafai from a UConn lens, because one thing Gordy is great at is... I suppose, managing minutes perfectly, and I don't just mean he knows when to pull guys out, he paces the minutes. Like he, he is probably the best guy when it comes to as a coach, and this may be an underrated uh, attribute, but to work out when the best, earliest time to pull a guy out is, or when the latest time is, better than most. You can read it really to the play, almost to the second, and know when that guy needs rest, or when the rest is going to benefit at the best time, so of course he can be used later. With a player like Shabazz, who's going to play some really, really heavy minutes, that's crucial, that's vital. Uh, he's going to know when to pull Shabazz, and when, you know, he's going to be able to keep that little play or two longer, without it affecting his impact in the game later in the matchup. Gafai, he He's a bit different because Niels is a very much a sort of a bench a role player for, for Bayern. They also have Andreas Obst who does a lot of the jobs Niels Gafai does in terms of three-point shooting. So I suppose Gafai's role at this stage, 33, he's like a veteran, obviously. He sort of brings that like veteran now to it. He's been really, really balling out in the Bundesliga, though, the German league, which we're going to talk a little bit more about in our next section, uh, where he's been shooting 48, 49% from three last season. Not as good in EuroLeague, but yeah, so there's that. Now we're going to get to some fandom similarities that I think UConn fans are going to appreciate. So, UConn, think about what you are in basketball. And I say that for both when you think about it, both the women's and the men's. Uh, you're a new blood turned blue blood. You're easily, of course, the most consistent across both combined for the last 30 years, which is kind of wild to say that, you know, but it's so clear cut that when it comes to consistency across both men's and women's and you're combining performances, there, there is no debate. Uh, and men's you've been pretty good the last while like the last two ncaa titles and of course uh, those were the first ones he's won since the era of shabazz and Niels. and so yeah you know you're pretty good and you're now a blue blood i think we all agree with that but for a long time you were considered new blood uh you know obviously when you came along it was like oh that's great then it's like oh they're like they're there and 
like me as a European, like because I was a bit like for me when I started following basketball, the college game was not the first thing I followed. It was the NBA, then it was European stuff, then I started watching college hoops. And UConn was already an established force at that stage. I put them in the vaulted eras of Blue Bloods, your UCLA's, your Kentucky's, your Carolinas. Uh, you know, I already had them up there where obviously if I was in the States, some people would have looked at me sideways kind of going, ah, here now, that's not remotely plausible. So you know that feeling. Bayern are that in basketball. Obviously, they are, you know, very much a well-known dominant force in soccer. This is the same Bayern, the same club, by the way, in both soccer, uh, football, as we call it over here. Although in Ireland, we kind of mix it about because we have a few different footballs, uh, but in soccer and basketball. And in basketball, they really were a non-entity for decades and decades. They existed as a club, but didn't really, you know, they were just like, oh, it's nice to have a basketball section and play in the lower leagues in Germany. And then about a decade ago, they decided, right, we're going to take basketball seriously. And they've pretty much taken it by storm. It took them a few years to get consistent. Like they had a couple of good EuroLeague seasons mixed with some not so great ones. And uh, they didn't always win the German championship. Whereas now they've sort of emerged into the team you expect to win the German title. Although that said... This year's championship was the first after four straight without it. Now, one of those four was a pandemic year, but, you know, they sort of, the championship, they just come off, and it's like, they beat Al, they, well, they, they knocked out Alba Berlin along the way, and it's a case of Alba, of course, who had won three titles in a row before not winning the title last year, it's the year before last, and then Al, Bayern, it's a case of, They've got the money, they've got the power, like they are the guys. Under Andrea Trinchieri's coaching, they got to the EuroLeague playoffs for the first time in the club's history, and it was the first time a German club had done that in around 15, 16, 17 years, I'm going to say. It was definitely the early 2000s. It was a very long time. And so, yeah, like they've put German basketball at the club level back on the map, and really... Before the national team was back on the map as a sort of force force, uh, you know, they sort of had done it as well as saying, hey, Germany is not just a large nation where basketball is a fourth or fifth sport, uh, which is an issue in Germany. Like basketball is competing with not just soccer, like football wins, by the way, football always wins in Germany, but uh, handball, which I'm sure a lot of you saw in the Olympics, volleyball is big, ice hockey is really big in Germany. So basketball has to compete with all of that. But Bayern, like there's all these established clubs and Bayern just came in and have essentially upset the old order like Bamberg who used to be called Bros of Bamberg they were like the force for a long time they're gone Alva who were probably the most consistent force over the decades in terms of sort of you know being able to consistently get championships without necessarily having these insane runs they did have one crazy run at the turn of the century again one of Niels' old teams like them they're like you know would have been seen as an established enough power even though they aren't actually that old a club and yeah, like Bayern are now seen as the new blood and sort of the big football club who've come in and taken over. Oddly, at the EuroLeague level, they're still in the new and some would argue not necessarily blood level in terms of sort of, you know, being... Because they aren't championship contenders yet. They will not be this season, although Gordy Herbert believes they can be. Uh, but they certainly can get in the conversation for making the postseason, which again, for the level they're at right now, plausible. But... It is seen as a matter of time. Eventually, the football club department, which makes so much money, brings in so much revenue, will see there's value, especially as interest in basketball grows in Germany, especially as expected in the next few years, Bayern will eventually move to a large arena than the Audi Dome in which they currently play. Fun fact, that's the same place where that 1972 gold medal game between the USSR and the USA happened. You, you know the one I mean. Uh, the one the Americans have never accepted their medals for. Uh, yep, that's where they play their home games. So they... You, uh, th that dome there is their their home home and it's expected they'll eventually move to somewhere bigger uh, that'll get developed and that will obviously see the football club put in real money championship quality team money and that could see them really become a new blood in the true sense on the way to being a blue blood in european basketball so that's one big big reason for uconn fans to be able to appreciate what's going on if they're if, as bayern fans so now we're going to get onto the kind of fun reasons as well Yep, weather, and I suppose culture as well, because Connecticut, great place, I haven't, I haven't been personally aside from through on a train, but it is gorgeous, but uh, you're a lot like Bavaria where Bayern are, uh, like stores in Munich, uh, may, maybe Munich's a little bit bigger than stores, but in terms of sort of their weather, that, 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 there's a lot going on there, there is a lot going on there, uh, because you know, you've got the four seasons, like there's a true Munich summer, there is a true Connecticut summer, there is definitely a true Connecticut winter, there is a true Bavarian winter, and uh, autumn is gorgeous in both, spring is pretty in both. So you've got that going on. And, you know, 
dark and wet nights, they're a bit tough. But also there's the love of beer, like the Connecticut craft beer scene. For those who don't know, I used to write about beer quite a lot. I still do the odd beer thing here and there work-wise. Uh, yep, yeah, it's a tough life. Uh, that's really coming along on the craft side. Whereas Munich is sort of seen as the, you know, ancestral home, but very especially of Drinken in Germany. Uh, like the Oktoberfest most famous thing, but all the other small cities near Munich, they have their own festivals in the run up to that. Like Erding, which you may have heard of Erding or the beer, I don't know. Some of the viewers certainly will have. Like the, 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 that's a tiny, tiny, tiny place. I went out there 20 years ago once, did the, the tour of the brewery. It was extraordinary. Uh, best six euro I've ever spent in my life, especially given how much beer I got for that six euro. And even accounting for inflation, that was insanely good value. So yeah, you've got that, you've got this. So the last thing I'm going to talk about is what to actually expect from Shabazz and Niels this season with Bayern. So they're both 33 coming into the season and people might go, well, that's surely the tail end. And it depends really on how you look at it because Gafai has a game which really doesn't age that much. Like he's, uh, he's like, you know, there to get to three points in, to pick up a couple of fouls and to do certain jobs, like to not mess up basically and get some three pointers. That's his key job and to bully around. And given he doesn't play heavy, heavy, heavy minutes, like I think his peak in the early last year was under 20. His peak in the Bundesliga last year wasn't too far off 20 either. Like he's typically a 13 minutes Euro League, 17 minutes Bundesliga guy. He's going to be able to keep at the level he's at for a few more seasons yet. Shabazz, obviously, you know, seen as more dynamic, but he's adapted to the European game. And the German game, again, is quite suited to him. So, especially with a coach like Gordy Herbert, watching his minutes, not running him too hard, but not taking him out too early either, like getting that balance right. I think Shabazz is going to fit in really, really well there. So they both expect to have pretty impressive campaigns given the natures of their roles. Like Shabazz is going to be in a much more of a prominent role than Gafai, but Gafai is still, I think, going to be able to deliver, especially given his chemistry that exists from 10 years ago with Shabazz Napier. And in terms of how far they can go, well, the Bundesliga, anything but the title, is considered a failure for Bayern, and that's every year, and this year is no exception. They look... They have made substantial changes, and prior to the arrival of Shabazz Napier, it would have been considered a net downgrade from last season in terms of roster. With the arrival of Shabazz, you kind of figure, okay, this is actually about even, just about even to last year's roster. And last year's roster was pretty good. Uh, they underperformed, but they're pretty good. If this year's roster, you know, in a better place mentally and in terms of organization, if it comes together... You know, couldn't be might might actually be in the conversation for the play-in. So top ten in Europe get to the postseason. It's very similar to the NBA in terms of how the play-ins work. It's actually identical. So seven to ten do a play-in tournament. Top six are already in the playoffs, and then you hit the playoffs, and then the winners of that make go on to the final four. Uh, and Niels Gafai has never been to a final four in Euroleague, and neither has Shabazz Napier. So. That would be kind of cool for either of them to be able to make that journey as well. Like, you know, 10 years after they last won a Final Four, well, it'll be 11 years at this stage, to go on and, uh, by, by next May, to go on and get to another Final Four together. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, it'd be a very different Final Four in terms of vibe and all that. But yeah, that's really plausible. Uh, I don't think they're going to the Final Four, but I think top 10, which is, I think that's in their range. My, I'm right now, I'm not picking them to do it, but it's within their range. But yeah, I think... Dominance in Germany is what they've got to be aiming for this year. Alba Berlin, who are traditionally the second best team in Germany, they look to have taken a step back in terms of roster this year. Uh, the other German sides just don't compete with Bayern on budget. But for every team that plays Bayern, it's like every Northeast team when they play UConn, every Big East team as well, you know, going conference wise, I mean, Northeast, the whole Northeast, like every Big East team when they play UConn, for them, it's their championship game. And for the Big East, you know, that's the way it is. For German League, German league teams, the Bundesliga, that's their championship game. Stylistic wise as well, for those who are curious, uh, the Bundesliga is probably the most similar in terms of play style to the NBA of all the European leagues, uh, but it still likes defense quite a lot as well. So, you know, but this, it's, it's a bit more offense oriented, I always find, but you do see some very, very heavy defense sides, don't get me wrong. But yeah, it's one of the most fun leagues because the fans really get into it. It's now, there, there are better individual fan bases across Europe, but if you're going like, all of a, all the way down an entire league, uh, like Bundesliga is pretty up there in terms of it, to be honest, in terms of depth of fans, uh, in terms of the quality support and the noise they make and the atmosphere they bring. So, yeah, I think 
Anything other than a win in the German league and the Bundesliga would be a disaster, frankly, for Bayern this season. If they win the German Cup, it's a bonus. The German Cup's one of the wilder cups in terms of what happens, because you'll see Alba in bad years somehow end up winning it, and you'll see some other sides come out of nowhere to do it. The one guarantee almost is that Bonn, who are often really cool, by the way, they won the Basketball Champions League a few years ago. They'll find a way to not win it, because there seems to be some sort of curse with them and that. But anyway, listen, so Shabazz, Gafai back together, and you can fans if you like this somewhere in the corner it will be appearing shortly my interview with Gandhi Malou Mamel she'll be joining your women's team uh, next uh, autumn next fall as you'd call it and of course please subscribe if you haven't already but until Monday when I do my next video I will see you soon